Good afternoon and Jebhim. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the US premiere of Somnat Vagmare's film, Chaiti Bhumi. My name is Jayashri Kaunde. I'm a professor of English at LaGuardia Community College and I've been following Somnath Vagmare on social media for a while now. I was very excited when I heard that the documentary Chaitya Bhumi was going to be screened here at Barnard and I immensely enjoyed watching it. I grew up in an Ambedkarite family. I'm from Mumbai. Uh, we've been to Chaitya Bhumi and I share a lot of the sort of emotions um, that people in the movie express. I ex you know, share a lot of the political and intellectual um, ideas that are in the movie and um, it was very moving to watch it. I definitely would like it to be in wider circulation. I'm very hopeful that it'll be screened in other places and I would be delighted if people especially could use it in university settings, in classrooms. Um, I'm very curious about whether um, Somnath is going to be giving us some pedagogical tools. I would love to have some kind of um, a teaching guide that people, even if they're not directly from our community, um, might be able to use so that the ideas in the film are clarified, that people who are watching it who may or may not have a context or background about um, Baba Saheb will be able to understand and will be able to grasp some of the ideas that are expressed in it as well as some of the visuals that are in the film and I think it would be an amazing addition to classrooms both in disciplines like mine, I am an English professor, but in you know disciplines in the social sciences, whether it's political theory, whether it's law, whether it's um, social justice classes, um, I think gender and women's studies, popular culture, anthropology, I think it's extremely rich. And so I'm hoping that it will be something that will be circulated widely, not just on the documentary or film circuit, but also within the classrooms. And I'm very excited. And so I think um, because caste is such a complicated question and some of the political situation that surrounds the, that question, especially in India right now, is so fragile and um, is so sort of fraught um, with issues of state power and trying to preserve democracy that just trying to teach it in terms of theory, trying to teach it purely through text, sometimes trying to teach it through texts that are extremely complex and require a tremendous amount of previous knowledge can be difficult as a task. So I think uh, a film like this one can actually help people enter into those conversations, no matter what level they're at in terms of the understanding of caste um, or the understanding of social justice and inequality, inequality based on birth, etc., cetera, um, would be actually a very powerful way to allow them to step into and then go on maybe to reading more complicated analyses, whether it is uh, analyses written by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar himself or by other folks who have written about marginalization and hierarchies and discrimination in other contexts, possibly as a way to build global solidarity. You know, the most fascinating scene that I thought was um, maybe going to cut across or speak to people um, was where you get a pan of uh, a stall, a book stall at Chaitya Bhumi, and um, you sort of slowly get a sense of some of the titles of the books that are there. And the titles are not just, you know, like works of Ambedkar or like the stories of, you know, uh, Dalits, but like it's, it like names Gramsci. It names, you know, like other kinds of thinkers uh, that other folks maybe who are not from Dalit intellectual communities or like the Dalit organic tradition will maybe like catch um, while they're watching uh, the movie and be like, oh, wait, what does 
what is how does Gramsci get into this? Like I know Gramsci, like how do I how do I use that in in the text? Um, but, but also, also um, I, I did catch her name, but there's also a very young uh, student and uh, thinker in there who talks about how what is special and important about this space and this the, the December six gatherings is that all the symbols that are there are all standing for social justice and how unique this is compared to all the other iconography that you will see in India and that often gets a lot of play across the world as some sort of like, you know, access to great Indian, Eastern something culture. Uh, but all of it is related in many ways to hierarchies and oppression. And for her to sort of like help people understand how to read iconography and understand why this is so unique and special, I think is like a really wonderful thing that the film includes. Throughout the movie, I was I was sitting in goosebumps. One of the reasons I come to Colombia is it gives me the memory of you know that hundred years back Ambedkar would have walked this space, and uh, I've never been to Saitya Bhumi this on December sixth. Just this summer in Mumbai, I was there for three days, and uh, one of the nights I was meeting a friends near Ch Shivaji Park, and uh, that was the first time I was there in Shivaji Park, and I saw Ambedkar's house, and uh, it was in the night, and we were talking about how that park is, you know, where Sachin Tendulkar used to play cricket and all of that. And, and I also realized this is the same place where millions of people come together every year and I've not witnessed that. And for me, that gave goosebumps when I was seeing through, through the, I got the opportunity to see that through the movie and just to see that so many people, like I think Soam Pimple was talking about it in the movie, how it's not public money, you know, it's not the tax money. It's, People hated Ambedkar, and now when Ambedkar has become so important to the discourse, now they have to appropriate Ambedkar, and now they critic Ambedkarites. And that was, but this movement is now built from bottom up by the people, and organized by people's money. Nobody is contributing. Like, the, it's not coming from top down, and that is very important. How memory is inscribed in space, that same space which is otherwise used. Like, I think Professor Anupama said, you know, by joggers every day or like the middle class, you know, the cricketers. That's that's a very famous path for cricket. a lot of cricketers coming from Mumbai. I think I just said it like I was sitting in goosebumps throughout the movie just to ex experience that. And like through the film, I think Somnath has done a brilliant job in bringing that to life through the movie. Yeah. Jai Bheem, everyone. My name is Ayush Singh and I am pursuing the Master of Laws program at the Columbia University. It was a fantastic film, which basically showed the humongous crowd gatherings that happen at Chaitibhumi every year, which is not covered by the social, by the mainstream Indian news media at all. And it was shown in the film here. It covers every aspects of it, from selling of books to the performances that happen at Chaitibhumi and Shivaji Park every year, and. It is a symbol. It is symbolic for the whole community itself, the depressed and oppressed community in India. It gives them a sense of enjoyment also when they come to these places and see how big they are. And congratulations, congratulations to the creators of the film because it's an inspirational film and it will be an inspiration for the youngsters in the community also. People who are not able to trace their path into the media sector where people from the community are missing at this level and we really need them to expose the truth of the society. So I feel the film gives them a stage to talk to people how to flourish in this sector. And I believe it's an inspirational film, a fantastic film, and it will have a great effect on people. I mean, the most important part about these events for me has been the sale of books, always. Like they have books available, which is shown in the film itself also at a very cheap price. For people from a community, it's not possible to buy books that cost like 500 rupees. At these, at these festivals, you can see books for 20 rupees, 30 rupees, which can be easily bought. That's why people buy like 50 to 100 books when they come to these places. And I believe the saying that educate, agitate and organize, it all starts from education. And this is a place where I have also been educated. Hi, so my name is Vipin. I, uh, I work in the U.S. in IT. So uh, today I got a chance to watch Somnath's documentary. Uh, it was very touching, emotional. I could see myself 
you feel the documentary as it as it as it goes. Uh, you know, Baba Sahib's Baba Sahib means a lot to everybody. Like the story is is pretty much the same. You know, coming up from from an underprivileged background and reaching these heights. Uh, you know, coming to the U.S. I owe a lot to Baba Sahib. We all owe everything to Baba Sahib. So remembering him uh, on December 6th is, is, is the least we could do. So I'm here to support Somnath. Uh, the documentary was very emotional. Uh, I wish him all the best and I want to see more of, more of these come from Somnath and I wish him uh, best wishes. Sure, so I think the first song was was so inspiring when when it you know when they talked about Shivaji Maharaj and Baba Sahab, the two kings of Konkan. Uh, that was really something you know that is an awestruck moment for me. And this comes very early in the in the in the documentary, and I I knew this is going to be a, a class because uh, no, we don't we don't connect as much uh, at least in the in the mainstream media. Shivaji Maharaj is, is, is kind of you know, appropriated by a different set of people, I'll say. Uh, but lo looking at his Kunbi origin, his Bahujan roots, uh, and connecting uh, Shivaji Maharaj and Baba Sahib together in a song, in a lyric, uh, that was awesome. I think everybody should watch. Uh, we need more of such movies to come out. Uh, there are a lot of th there's assertion in this, you know, and this assertion has to come out. Uh, we don't want to see a stereotype, uh, underprivileged and oppressed uh, community. We are now making huge strides. We are in the U.S. There is an Ambedkarite diaspora in the U.S. And this is how it should be. It, it has to be more assertive. It has to be more positive, And it has to be more promising. Hi, name is Manjuri. Uh, I have watched the documentary today called Chaitya Bhumi. It is a very important documentary for all Dalits. It tells us about the Dalit situation currently in India, which is not very good. Uh, I see that uh, from what I can see from the documentary is that it's just the lack of resources for this community and how stark the reality is compared to the Bollywood and the uh, general mainstream media. The, the differences are so stark that it's astonishing and I, I think we need more of these kind of documentaries that bring forth realistic light of the current plight of Indian population instead of just the glitz and glamour that Bollywood dishes mindlessly and spends astronomical amounts of money. And as I was looking at the documentary, I just, I was remembered of this blockbuster movie called Pushpa, which was actually which, which actually was supposed to portray a very downtrodden, um, like a protagonist. Um, but it is so ironical that that protagonist was actually played by an upper caste Indian. And not only did he play, it was not just an upper caste Indian who played it, but he actually charged 200 and some crores to play that movie. And now the sequel of that movie he is charging 100 crores more to play a, you know, a Dalit protagonist. And I think that just sums up the complete hypocrisy that's there in Indian cinema, that uh, you have forward casts playing these roles and demanding money, and uh, those benefits are not reaching the Dalit community. So I think uh, we need more and more of these documentaries. We need these documentaries to come in Netflix and you know all the main... Uh, streaming media so that it will reach all the population and there were scenes where initially there was this very nice celebration um, you know people were singing and there were monks coming and you know Ambedkar family uh, people were coming and it, it was very festive and uh, very dramatic and one can be fooled to think that this is what is going to be all the time but once all those festivities are over you can just see how how dismal the place is. Like there's a lot of um, rain and mud, and there is no proper sanitation. And just nearby are like these high-rise towers, you know, skyscrapers, and it's such a stark contrast. 
like you have skyscrapers on one side and you have mud and you know like filth on the other side and and I'm just wondering what is government of Maharashtra doing you know like why is it there's so much of a disparity it is extremely stark it's very unsettling and I think everybody should uh, you know address this issue. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Divya. I'm a student at Columbia University. I'm doing my master's in um, MISAS. Hi, I'm Disha. I'm a student at Columbia Law School. I'm doing my master's in law. Watching this film was a nice experience because I think the conversations of um, caste that happened after the screening of the film, which obviously came up because of the film, were very important. Um, I think it also helped us bring in questions of solidarity and work on it with the people within the room. Uh, so I, I thought it was a very positive experience. I loved the film, especially because I felt that the film is a celebration of the Ambedkarite movement in its true sense. Um, and what a place to start this, uh, like in Colombia, at Colombia, which is where Dr. Ambedkar's intellectual churning, intellectual churning really started and happened, right? So um, I am so grateful for Somnath for bringing this uh, film to Colombia and screening it uh, at Colombia. Um, I'm just truly, truly inspired, and I'd just like to narrate a very small incident of. Uh, Chaitya Bhumi and my personal experience of Chaitya Bhumi. I'm from Pune and I come from a denotified tribal community. And um, I feel like a lot of people think that Chaitya Bhumi's connection is mostly with uh, the scheduled caste communities. Uh, but um, in 2006, when I was 14 years old, my parents took me to Chaitya Bhumi. And it was a congregation of around 10 lakh people from denotified communities people like Madaris and people like Kadak Lakshmi Wale, Mariai Wale, Pardis, extremely, extremely lumpen elements of society um, and who basically took the oath to give up Hinduism and the Hindu religion and, um, um, uh, you know, who took to Buddhism. So uh, for me, this, is, this was uh, a reminder uh, of the oath that, oath of equality and oath of fraternity and the Ambedkarite oath that my community members had taken and it was very emotional and it's a reminder of um, all of, um, you know, it brings back all those emotions. So, uh, thank you so much. It's, it's, as someone said in the film, I think Pranjal said uh, in the film and uh, Rahul said in the film that uh, this is um, an emotional moment. It's not just an intellectual moment for us. Thank you. Um, so my name is Anupama Rao. I uh, actually had the pleasure of inviting Svita Rajmane and Somnat Vagmare here to Colombia and uh, as guests of the Ambedkar Initiative to join us to um, participate in an exhibit of the uh, Ambedkar Digital Bookmobile and to show the film. The film keeps opening up onto large public spaces where people are acting, they're speaking, they're singing, they're performing, but in ways that are unscripted and where there isn't a kind of control over what happens in that public space. And then there's a very nice way in which then Somnath himself seems to control the pace of the narrative by finding spaces that are quiet. And the spaces, to my mind, that are quiet are the places that are reflective. They are spaces that are deeply imbued with the thought and the life worlds of Buddhism. Buddhism as felt, as embodied, as practiced. And that really comes through with the chant and the ways in which Buddhism and the thought and the sound and the voice of Buddhism actually creates something like a um, a gentle arc and a curve across the film. So to my mind, it's that pacing of exuberance, of uh, people sort of in, in uh, public spaces, uninhibited, uh, doing what they do, a lot of ephemeral gatherings, convenings, where people are meeting each other, they're pulling people into groups, they're performing for a large public, and then there's a kind of quietness. Very often that also um, 
correlates with uh, the relationship between night and day. So the night seems to be the time when we're called by Buddhist prayer and we always see the, uh, the Chaitya Bhumi and we actually see the stupa. And so that is, is rather lovely that, you know, at night every day, you see the stupa, you hear the voice, you hear the Buddhist prayer, and then it takes you into another aspect of the film. So as I said, that's one aspect of the film, to my mind, that's very interesting, that's really important for us to think about. This is actually a film that does a lot of justice to the everyday lives and the work and the words of the people who are part and participant of this film. And that, again, I appreciate very much, that everybody gets a lot of space to talk, they get a lot of space to speak. Each song is captured in its entirety. And I found that also um, a kind of ethics of the filmmaker, if you will. And I think that was quite important to me. There's many, many other things that can be said about the questions that are posed, I think, about what it means to focus on one site, one event, and to open out onto a life world. Right? How do you really do that? How effective are you in doing that? The other question that the film poses, it seems to me, is the relationship between Ambedkar as thinker and intellectual and Ambedkar as um, a familiar, uh, somebody who is deeply familiar, felt, loved, and who is seen to live and be a part of the people who are claiming him. And that's a very interesting divide to my mind because as an academic, you know, I'm very interested also in Ambedkar's thought. I'm interested in thinking about him as a political thinker, an extraordinary thinker of democracy, uh, of social justice, of course, and the ways in which he thinks about problems, deep problems of social difference and uh, equality. But this is a different Ambedkar. This is an Ambedkar who is there with the people. They know him, they speak to him, they live with him. And that relationship between the everyday Ambedkar and the intellectual Ambedkar is also a question that the film poses and it doesn't resolve, it seems.